I think back to Anthony, right? A couple years back, his young man in university had many complaints about his father, about the university. And a great point, I think, to affirm the young man is if he's in great judgment of the authorities in his life, but he's still letting them run his life and he's just bitching and complaining about it, this is the time when you say, look, you obviously think you can do it better. Go do it. Yes. Go do it. Leave the nest. Go run your life. Affirm the young men. Good morning, everyone. We're back. We're back in a series uh, talking, exploring, putting up questions on how to be an elder. How to be an elder because being an elder is a great way to install honor in your life, to create meaning in your life. And uh, we've been exploring this concept of what it is to be an elder, who to be an elder for, the challenge of being an elder. And then we listed uh, 10 plus ways uh, of being an elder. We talked about two of them already. The first one was be an ancestor worth coming from. And the second one was honor thy ancestors. Today we're going and to elders. And elders. Today we're going to talk, talk about the third one. Affirm the young Men, what does it mean, Michael, to affirm the young men? Well, I'll get to that in a second. I just want to add to what you said about why to take on the role of elderhood and to become an elder. And uh, you mentioned a few reasons, like for you, you know, to have install meaning and purpose in your life. But there are many reasons, and. Uh, you know, we, we covered them on several of our last uh, episodes, but it's far bigger than you, right? It's far bigger than me or the meaning and purpose I want in my life. There's, our younger brothers are dying, you know? Suicide, um, fentanyl addiction, other addictions, uh, antidepressants which just kill the soul of a man. Like there's, you know, and because it's the elders who are gonna restore the law, it's, it's really only the elders that are gonna restore what's been lost in terms of passing on wisdom, passing on honor, you know, protecting one's people. You know, the, the way the, the modern world is, it's all about, you know, separation. And as atomized individuals, we have no power to stand up and place limits on government, corporations, and these other forces that would rob and kill the spirit and the health of our people. So this, there's many reasons on, on why to be an elder. Come back to your question. What is it to, what does it mean to uh, affirm the young man? So, you know, whereas the parent's role often ends up being to err on the side of caution. caution and keeping the young man safe, making sure he's totally prepared for the world out there before he goes out into the wilderness. Uh, it's the it's the elder's role that, you know, beyond the, the father and mother that doesn't have all that direct personal tie to the young man to call him out and, and take him through the rite of passage, to call him out, give him the bigger mission to call him out, send him to war, you know, send him over the seas on a, on a mission for his people, you know, to, uh, to be not so concerned with his hurt, his harm, his feelings, or his possible death. And this is the way that he become that he really becomes a man and, uh, an elder for his people, you know, someone who's willing to risk his life, to do what it takes, to mm. do the right thing. And not just calling him, but also affirming him, meaning believe that he has what it takes to come out the other end. Yeah, it's, you know, there's so many, 
so many boys and young men today struggling to just have a sense of confidence that they do have what it takes or that they are man enough. Mm. You know, I can, re I can relate to that. I, I walked away from all, almost all the rites of passage that I was born into from going on a Mormon mission. I, I didn't do it. Graduating university, I didn't do it. Uh, getting married in the temple, I didn't do it. You know, all these things that are kind of like a rite of passage in my partic particular tradition growing mm. up. I didn't do it. And so these are the ways that your people know you as a man. And then you don't do it. You don't get that uh, feedback from your people that you are a man, necessarily. And so uh, these rites of passage are sorely longing in our, in our uh, mm -hmm. modern world. And so um, these young men are left to struggle to, on their own, to, you know, know themselves as a man and someone who has what it takes and it's very much the, the role of an elder uh, to do this it's almost like a, it's impossible if you have to do it by yourself you know you need that resonance reflection from community from structure from rituals from ceremonies and and young men will find a way to do it one way or another they'll join gangs they'll mm. They'll turn to uh, violence to prove their manhood. When I was, uh, I think I was 20, I was reading uh, Robert Bly, Iron John, mm. all night long. Sun came up early, early in the morning. I was in downtown Salt Lake City, looking up, you know, at uh, the mountains, and decided I was gonna. Run until, run until I reached one of the mountain peaks, the snow-covered mountain peaks. I ended up taking that on to, you know, to prove something to myself. You know, to, I, I, I wanted the challenge. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know that I had what it took. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, young men can find ways that are healthy and, and not healthy, but uh, it's just sorely lacking when, when it all comes back to the individual yes. young man to try to do it for himself. Yeah. Do, do it yourself <laughs> is overrated in today's world. There's a huge missing role of elders. So I hear affirming the young man is both, you're calling him into something where parents probably would choose more caution and prepare him more until he's ready to go into the, the world. And with that calling, also speak and have uh, the trust, the confidence that he has what it takes to uh, to meet the challenge. Is that affirming the young man? A great book, a great book to go deeper into this is uh, the Continuum concept. It's about a, I think it's an American woman that that, that went. Uh, to the jungles in uh, Venezuela, spend time with indigenous people for like years at a time there. And uh, it's interesting observing how she's trying to like fix things and like help boys and young men, young men to like become men. And uh, her help is not needed, you know? And she very, you know, humbly and honestly observes our Western patterns compared with the indigenous patterns. And, uh, you know, many indigenous cultures just, there's that sense from the, inf the time the infant is born that it has what it takes for this earth, you know, to thrive on this earth. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, and my buddy O would talk about being with um, the, uh, I think it was the Zapotec people in, in central Mexico, in places where no Westerners are, are really welcome. And uh, he, was with, uh, he was with a man who, around a fire, and his son was playing with a machete right near the fire. Like the, the kid could cut himself, the kid could fall into the fire. There was just, there wasn't this, you know, this hyper, Concern, like, oh no, you know, you have to control the the little kid with everything, you know. 
Well, even small children have fears of falling, you know. Small children have natural learning mechanisms. When I went to uh, Panama and I spent, it was just two days with an indigenous tribe, I was surprised, surprised as we came up like, a, it was like a motorized canoe driven by two young indigenous boys on the river, about an hour up the river. And uh, we arrived at this little settlement where, uh, you know, maybe, maybe a dozen families or less of, of this tribe lived. And uh, there were a bunch of young girls playing in this raging river. No, not an adult to be seen, you know? And it's like, it's, it's a little startling to, to a Westerner, you know? It's like these kids are gonna drown, they're gonna hurt themselves, we need to control them, we need to teach them, you know? And uh, you can imagine what, what it does mm. to grow up with the affirmation that you have what it takes for this earth right. versus right. the constant fear and affirmation that you don't have what it takes for this earth. Mm. It's, uh, it's even, it's even like, I, I, I don't know who wrote about this, but to be emotionally, people who are emotionally spoiled, and I'll say what it is, but emotionally spoiled to have, carry a self-confidence for the rest of their life, you know? Emotionally spoiled in the sense that uh, the parents trust that the kid uh, has what it, what it takes to be great. Like I was raised with parents who, and my father talked about this, you know, I always wanted to let you free. I wanted to let you free. I wanted to let you free. That was his main thing, you know? And I've always felt the trust of my parents that I'm great, <laughs> you know? Little did they know. <laughs> they were right. And, and I thought this was normal. And as I meet more people, I, I see that this is very rare. That both, I didn't have to fight for the love of my parents. I didn't have to prove myself. And I could always feel that they like, they trust that I'm great. They look, and I could see it. They still look at me and they think, wow, he's fantastic, you know? And it, that's emotionally spoiled in a way. And it gives me such an advantage, I would say, over so many people because I have that confidence. I'm like, I have a deep trust, one, not only that I have what it takes, but I also trust that everything is going to be okay and that the world is like looking out for me and there's a kind of like yeah i always thought it was normal but most people have to fight for this they have to go and fight for this you know and i had this yeah i had this from my mother she always encourages to, you know to run free and mm -hmm. i mean my youth in the 70s and 80s was very different than a lot of young people today mm -hmm. and uh it's, it's, it's very unfortunate, you know, yeah. that so many young people today are growing up with such overprotective parents and adults and, yes. you know, micromanaging them. It's a, it's a, they're really yeah. being deprived of it's, that. Uh, it's 100%. It's, it's I see it now. Yeah, I remember as a kid too, was staying with my grandparents and I would just go out, you know, and go to the forest, and, you know, to make bows and arrows and there's nobody watching that. Nobody. You know, yeah. and I would go into the fields and the cows would chase me and you like. And that's how it was in this uh, indigenous tribe that I visited. Uh -huh. The little, the little girls were, they were mostly in and around the village and playing in the river. The little boys wandered off into the jungle completely alone, yeah. no adults around, yeah. you know. And uh, they're out hunting and fishing and playing and getting up to who knows what. And there's absolutely no micromanaging and they yeah. come home around dusk along with the men come home around dusk and that's when the kind of the the village gets a bit noisy because everyone's coming back together everyone's talking you know sharing dinner and then uh, a little bit later everything goes quiet everyone's asleep there's no TV there's no whatever and, and you get to see like what is a natural rhythm yes. of life there a natural way but let's let's keep come back to affirming the young men you know because I can see now it's like calling him out of the comfort that parents would usually have or caution they have for him also trusting he has what it takes but i could see also in when i was let free it was not necessarily trusting that nothing would happen but it was that it's it's just we're not going to be overprotective we're not going to like 
if something happens, that's okay too. You know, it's not like I, it's not like I wasn't in danger, but it's trusting that uh, it will be what it needs to be, and that you'll learn. That you learn. And that you learn. Maybe and, that's yeah. And and humans are. I mean, if there's one thing that we have over the rest of the animal kingdom, you know, I mean, there's a few things I could think you could say, but the ability to learn, the ability to learn, uh, you know, we're not, we're not born with as much instinct as most of the rest of the animals. So, but we, we're amazing learners. And so to try to micromanage our, our children is, uh, yeah. is to affirm that they don't have what it takes and is to not affirm their natural <laughs> survival mm. capacity and uh, so I thought maybe we could tell a few stories yeah of, how, uh, how did it look for you when you're say eldering a younger man how did it look for you to affirm him do we want to tell any stories of how we were affirmed first I've told I've told a number of these stories on previous episodes so maybe we can skip that uh, yeah how you how were you affirmed by your parents or elders. Well, I mean, there there was just zero micromanaging by my mother, and my dad was out working all day, you know. So it was literally a free for all. I mean, I we rode our that dirt explains bikes. Explains a lot. We rode. <laughs> we did whatever we wanted. I'm doing whatever I want. We rode our dirt bikes everywhere. I mean, our parents had no clue where we were. No clue. We were up to whatever the hell, you know? And uh, we did get a lot of, you know, I would say moral training, love, education, all of this, but there were vast periods of time we were just set loose. And uh, I've told the stories of my grandfather, his way of teaching me, I'd go out west for the summer. Mm -hmm. And you know, he'd, take me to a sheep he just slaughtered hanging upside down and he'd, he'd tell me I want you to skin it and gut it and come and get me when you're done you know and hand me his buck knife and walk away that was it you know and I had to figure it out so uh, may, he did that many times with many different uh, challenges and that was his way of teaching you know I wasn't just, worried that I'd make a mistake education and entrepreneurship yeah, I don't know about entrepreneurship, but just uh, you got to find a way. You got to find a solution. And that's you, I think you could say that's being a man, also, you know, to a large extent. Whatever it takes, provide and protect your people. You know. So. Kill the sheep. Yeah. So, what did yours teach you how to kill a zucchini? <laughs> Hans is uh, plant-based. He's uh, very much against the killing of the animals. Well, that sounded a bit, uh... <laughs> He only kills the plants. So, yeah, with young men, I mean, I mean, think back to Anthony, right? A couple years back, this young man in university had many complaints about uh, his father, about the university, and, you know, I... One of the things that I, a great point I think to affirm the young man is if he's in great judgment of the authorities in his life, yes. but he's still letting them run his life and he's just bitching and complaining about it, this is the time when you say, look, you obviously think you can do it better. Go do it. Yes. Go do it. Leave the nest. Go run your life. You know? Yes. And uh, yeah, we just affirmed him. He left home. Left home. He traveled the U.S. He traveled the world. He came to live in Medellin for a while. Yes. He started his own business. Yes. He uh, got experience with women. And he now lives uh, in Austin, Texas. Doing filming. And uh, yeah, he's, he, uh, he had what it took. You know, I, I think, uh, I mean, if you look at the modern world, all the all the rules, regulations, the education, everything that we have to try to modify human behavior and train for obedience and, and to indoctrinate 
Most of it didn't exist a hundred years ago. Mm. How did humans survive without all that? We have what it takes, you yes. know. We are, and and O said this to me, you know. Like I did a I did a one on one training with O in 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 uh, Australia. This was only twelve years ago, and he really affirmed this to me at the next level. One of the things that he said was that, uh, you know, human life forms, we're, we're a very large percent of us is, uh, is carbon. And uh, what is carbon? It's, it's basically stardust, you know? And he explained it as, I mean, he, the way he colorfully put it is like, humans are the star's way of looking back at themselves, you know? Like we're the result of a billion plus years of evolution. Successful, successful and unbroken chain of evolution, you know? <laughs> like literally, success, 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 multiplied by what, a million times, millions, hundreds of millions of times, an unbroken chain of successful reproduction and survival and reproduction and survival. So why should we have a doubt that we're not enough, you know, that we don't have what it takes? Mm. Yes. Well, that's a good philosophical point. Yeah. Of course, you know, to quote unquote survive in a, you know, the modern world is a, it, it is a different undertaking, right? I'm very, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing the role that you can have as a man you know, that's different from, from the parent who's cautious, uh, be an elder, you know, and for a younger man, and fight him. I'm thinking of Fair, or I'm thinking of Anthony, uh, I'm thinking of Raphael, uh, I'm thinking of Joe, I'm thinking of Lungisani, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and call them into adventure, call them into the deep end, call them into the world and uh, yeah, nudge them and, 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 and be there for them, but also like not be omnipresent and just say, you got it, you got it, you got it. You got the skills, you got the knowledge, you got everything you need to make it. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to, to be playing that, that part for younger men. I, th I think it's a difficult thing as well. Like where's, where's the balance of, yeah. you, you know, because as an, as, a, as an adult, you care for this younger yes. person. You do want to yes. educate them, teach them. Yes. But too much of that uh, definitely affirms that they don't have what it takes, you know. And um, I, I read something about parenting and it was, you should parent your child just enough that they don't die and then it should be free. You know? But let me ask you this, you sometimes, you call someone forth, you call them into adventure, uh, say it's the elder thing to do, go forth. And then you, you almost, or uh, sometimes you, you put parentheses, you say, well, okay, <laughs> you know, um, I'm known to uh, to just say yes to people, you know. Don't necessarily trust me for it, you know. Like, oh, yeah, this this is a great point, actually. I think most of our invitations to learning and to adventure are commercial consumer experiences, mm -hmm. where we're guaranteed an outcome. And I think this is, if what we want to do is elder the young people. Uh, you get called into the, in, you get called to war. There's no guarantee you're coming home. Mm -hmm. You know, you go out on a hunt against wild beasts. There is no guarantee you're coming home mm -hmm. alive. You know, and it's important to go anyway. But it's, I think it's important that that the person being called is aware that of the risk, and there's no guarantee. So they are self-responsible. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest things that the elder. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. needs to do is not yes. take care yes. of, of the outcome, yes. but put that responsibility on the individual younger man yes. and say, 
you know, be aware, be alert. You're going to have to fight for your survival and don't trust me completely. Use your own, Yes. you know, use your own intelligence. Maybe that's the difference between a, a parent and an elder is that uh, the parent is, is usually taking the responsibility of the kid away. You know, he's overstepping the boundaries of, of his or her responsibility to take care of the safety of the the child. You know, I going back to this book, the continuum concept. There's a story in the book where the the Western woman she's concerned about this one uh, boy that he's not maybe he's not I don't know learning enough. Maybe he's I don't know getting into trouble. I can't remember what her concern about him was. And the chief of the village would go out every day out in you know leave the village and go off to hunt and several times she called after the chief because she wanted the boy to go with him you know she's like mm -hmm. trying to make something happen there and the chief wouldn't even turn around he wouldn't even uh respond and finally she let go of the trying to control the situation and one day she noticed the boy run out to the chief and go off with him, you know? And then, like, it was the indigenous way that the boy will go when he's ready. <laughs> of course he will. Of course he's gonna wanna learn how mm -hmm. to hunt and how to, you know, do the things that mm -hmm. are honored amongst the tribes people for being a man. Mm -hmm. And it's not, uh, you know, there's this, all this, efforting in Western culture about making things happen. I like, I like it, the, the word that you used there, the micromanaging. You know, it's a great way of distinguishing between the good way and the bad way. Yeah. There's, no, there's no micromanaging uh, to happen if we're eldering and if we're affirming a younger man. And if parents are overbearing, is this micromanaging, trying to arrange it. You know, I don't have any direct experience with like uh, indigenous gatherings, celebrations, that sort of thing, but O would talk about it often. Time he spent and, uh, you know, they'll come together for a ceremony and, uh, you know, one of the one or more of the elders might show up drunken or this or that, and there's no one. Like if this, imagine like you're at church, and a drunk walks in. And he's shouting. He's disrupting the, the the rituals and the songs and whatever. He would very much be dealt with and put into line, into order, and, or, or removed. But in the indigenous spaces. Everyone was welcome, and it's just that it just like you don't have to be a certain way to be welcome. Yes, you are our people, you know. You're bringing a certain spirit, a certain intelligence, a certain perspective that's Your voice that's welcome and needed. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with you, like their level of affirmation of you as a as that's a being is mm -hmm. just so nope. deep. No mag micromanaging, no thinking, assuming that something is wrong with you. These are great ways of describing what it means to affirm someone. Yeah, and then, you know, we get older having been so micromanaged. This affirmation, affirmation that we're not enough, we don't have what it takes. Yes. And then we're trying to micromanage ourselves and try to get ourselves to believe in ourselves. Yes. Because we're missing just that natural thing that's given. And then we have children. <laughs> this is and one so of the reasons transgenerational... why elders are so priceless, yes. so yes. needed, yes. and that we take up this role so we restore it amongst Great. our future Great. generations. Affirm the young men. So if we're talking about how to do this, Hans, I have a... I would say I would say this you're with a younger person maybe it's your child maybe it's the neighbor child whoever it is he's doing something and you then notice you're trying to like 
control that behavior. You know? What you're doing there is reacting to a feeling that you're having. And if we want to kind of transform how we are as, a, as, a, as an elder, I think it helps to become aware of this response that's causing our reaction. And, uh, you know, can we just be with it? Can we just be with it? Um, it's a great challenge when babies are crying on the plane next time. And those babies are crying on the plane likely because they've been micromanaged. Yes. <laughs> you know? 100%. <laughs> from the moment of they were yanked from the womb, you know? So it's even tougher now to be an elder. Man, it's, it's, it is a serious challenge. Yes, it's tougher it's, because... We live... The modern world affirms that there's something wrong with all of us. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so. a lot of the self-development is about healing people, you know, as if something is wrong. Yeah, to, be a rebe to be an elder in today's world is, a re is an act of rebellion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I see the big challenge now, you know, given the absence of existing structures and people being raised in it and now having to deal with that, you know. It's a huge challenge to be an elder. It's a great opportunity, too, because it has so much leverage in what if you're trying to create meaning purpose you know uh, brotherhood uh, honor um, but it's a huge challenge it's a huge challenge and that's why it's so important to choose wisely who you're going to elder which is one of the things we talked about on a couple of podcasts ago you know. yes any more stories well there are many more I told a number of them on this on yes. previous episodes, but yes. uh, and you just went and spent time with a little bit of time with the Maasai anyway. And one of the things you remarked was there were no children crying. We were there. Our friend Kamen has three wives and twelve children, something like this, which is also something interesting. And they have no water, no electricity, no running water, no electricity. We were there four, four days, I think. Not once did I hear a, a child cry and not once. You go, huh? What is this? You know, you could refer to community. You could refer to, you know, not micromanaging. You could refer to elder, elderhood. You know, but there's something there that we have lost. Uh, you know, if if crying children is the the signal of that, so. We, we learned to guide ourselves using the model of how authorities guided us. Yes. So we tend to take the way that authorities guided us and internalize that yes. against ourselves or with ourselves. Yes. Another reason why it's so powerful to have elders that affirm you have what it takes yes. and that are not like divided against your will. Yeah, elderhood is really the, or be it, no, you deciding you committing to be an elder is really breaking that that generational trauma generational ways of uh, having authority you know you could change that you showing up as an elder for one young man can change that you know because that young man is going to be an elder for other young men and so on and so on so yeah it's a huge challenge but it's a great opportunity too you know that you could break that, that you could be the one you could be the one and to, and to do it with yourself, you know, to to take the reins, stand up, speak up, do what you feel is right, mm. and uh, yeah, be the be a rebel in the face of the modern world, not yes. just rebelling against, but standing yes. for something. Being a warrior is more it. Yes, you know? standing your truth, standing your ground. Change the way you take care of yourself and of your people. Um, if you feel called by this, reach out. If you feel something is coming up, you know, reach out to us. Uh, this is what we're doing. This is what we're creating in this world. This is uh, the community that we're creating, the brotherhood that we're creating, the elderhood that we're creating. If you feel called, reach out because we're here for the, you. Uh, the 
sacred honor ceremony and trainings we're doing here in uh, the Mount, the Andes Mountains near Medellin, Colombia, in just a few months, is about coming back to the natural, whole, aligned self-guidance. Mm. You know, um, a new relationship with authority. A, I think you could say a right relationship mm. with authority, being your own authority. Yes. Being regarded as an authority amongst your people, and uh, it's not this Western divided state. Yes. If you're interested, hit us up. No. Come to Medellin. See you tomorrow. Ah oh, no. See you on Monday.